In the beginning, Christine Hales was like a lot of artists, but then she discovered the path of painting religious icons. Let's visit her Bradenton studio where faith and art intersect. Okay. I'm Christine Simino Hales and I'm an artist. In high school in Quincy, Massachusetts, my art teachers thought that I should apply to art college. And once I got in, it was like I was in a world that was my world. So ever since then, I've always been an artist. Well, we're here to talk about the icons that I paint. The only thing I knew about icons until about 25 years ago was in an art history class. And they were just a slide that you see and so forth. But my husband is a well-known garden photographer. He's a British garden photographer. and. He was writing and photographing a book called Monastic Gardens. And we went to a convent in France, and the sisters there were like, ah, oh, you're an artist. We have to introduce you to Sister Miriam. She's our iconographer. And I thought, well, <laughs> you know, to be polite, I said, okay, sure, I'd love that. When I walked out of there, my husband said, I looked completely different. It was like the light went on. An icon, while it is a painting, we don't call it painting, we call it writing. Because it's really meant to be the gospel or scripture in visual form. It's almost like, instead of being a painting, it's like a pictograph. Remember like Egyptian art? How you would see on the walls, they would have pictures of birds, but it would be a word? That's what icons are. So that's really a language, it's a visual language. Icons in Christian art are actually a fairly ancient form of Christian art. They are intended not just to be a piece of art or a beautiful thing to display, but actually a window into heaven. Icons are intended to be used as a focal point while you pray that enables you to hopefully more clearly hear and discern the will of God in your life. An iconographer is someone who seeks to be more in the background in iconography, we never sign our paintings on the front, never. If we do sign them, we sign them on the back. Before I start, I do my Bible reading, I do my praying, I do my meditating. So it's like I prepare myself in my mind and in my spirit to engage with the materials. And when I engage, it's like you get into a zone. It's just me and God. And so it's like a dialogue. It's very much like prayer. It's painting and prayer mixed together. It starts with a drawing, and the drawing itself is composed of what we call sacred geometry. So the composition is very specific. Then the painting methods that we use are based on classical painting. We paint with pigments, with dry pigments. So we mix those dry pigments with the yolk of an egg. What you can achieve with egg tempera is layer upon layer of transparent veils of color. And it creates this rich, deep experience, which you can't get any other way. I'm really lucky to know Christine. I asked her to write an icon for me. There is a character in the Bible that many people know. He wrote the majority of the New Testament. His name is St. Paul. And Whenever you see St. Paul depicted in art, he looks like an old man with a pen and he looks like he's writing on a scroll. And the drawings take hours and hours and hours. I mean, probably maybe eight hours of drawing at least. So I came up with a drawing and showed it to him and he said, well, no. <laughs> and so I asked Christine to depict St. Paul not as kind of a wafy old man in his study writing a letter, but as a strong, young men building tents surrounded by people, engaging those people and becoming in relationship with those people in order to spread the gospel. An icon enables you to picture God in a way that God reveals himself to the writer of the icon, but also if you're commissioning an icon like I am with Christine, enables you to get someone who in prayer can share the vision that you have to depict a character in the Bible or a saint or a scene in the life of Jesus to come alive. The Eastern Orthodox people believe that the only people who can write an icon are men who are Orthodox. 
I'm not Orthodox, <laughs> I'm not Russian, and I'm a woman, you know. And I really did a lot of soul searching on that. And I, I felt like God has called me to do this. So I just thought, well, God, you're the one I answer to. And I just have to take it on the chin because it's such a beautiful art form. There's a really important intersection between faith and art, and you could see that just with the music that was developed in medieval times. So much of the great historic classical music that we have, it comes from the Christian tradition. And then when you just think about the Sistine Chapel and all the phenomenal artists of the time that were commissioned by the church so that our faith can come alive through art, and to a degree, the liturgy, the Mass, the Holy Eucharist is in a lot of ways a type of, it's more than just, but a type of performance art. It's just a wonderful thing when people can access art almost subliminally, like they go to church to pray and worship, but these beautiful figures of the saints, you know, we talk about the communion of saints, that we're not alone. There are others who came before us and who have the same experience. We say icons are the invisible made visible. To learn more, visit ChristineHalesIcons.com.